Hello, welcome again. This is a series that is basically discussing the fundamentals of signal processing. In the last slide, what I covered was the basics of signals, like the signal definitions. And then also, we spent a lot of time discussing how to do the sampling, which basically is converting the signal from analog continuous time to analog discrete time. Then we learned that in order to decide how we want to sample this signal to go from the uh, continuous analog to analog discrete, the important thing is that we must sample at a rate greater than the Nyquist rate, which is 2B, where B is the bandwidth of the signal. And that's important because we want to make sure that we are able to reconstruct the original signal from the sampled signal. Now, um, we will discuss some more details on sampling. Let's start here. So in the last slide, uh, in the last video, we talked about how to convert the analog continuous time signal to uh, analog discrete time signal. And the way we do that is that we take this original signal, multiply that with an impulse train, which is uh, just these impulses at a fixed time interval, then we get this sampled signal. Now, uh, we, let, let's focus on this equation, which we didn't really discuss in the last slide. So this signal, the sampled signal, is essentially the original signal x of t multiplied with the impulse strain. So that's pretty much what it is. We can also rewrite this signal as the summation of individual samples. What that means is that. So let's look at this figure in the bottom. So this, these are our different samples. So let's say this is a sample that we that we got at at, at uh, this is our first sample then after the fixed interval t this is our second in, uh, sample this is our third sample so these are these are just these samples at fixed time intervals so this is how we can re write that in when 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 on the x axis you have time we can also define this signal by putting it on the axis that gives us the number of samples. So instead of saying time here, now these are individual samples. This is the first sample, second sample, third sample, fourth sample, and so on. Therefore, we can rewrite this equation that is the definition of the sample signal as x n of t times u of t. What that really means is that this, the value of the sample, the value of this sample at the value of the nth sample of the sampled signal is really the value of the original signal calculated at time n of t. So let's, I think this is clear from this uh, figure here. So let's say we are talking about the second sample, which is here. So the value of the second sample is going to be equal to the original signal calculated at time 2t. So that's really what this equation is. Let's do an example to understand it further. So let's say you're given a continuous time analog signal that is defined by 2e negative of 5t times u of t. And we want to convert this signal to analog discrete time signal. We want to convert from analog continuous time to discrete time. And we're given our sampling interval as 0 0.1 seconds. So what we would do is we would take this original signal x of a t and then pass that into our sampler with time in 
vector will define as 0.1 second. And what we should get is a digital, sorry, analog discrete sig time sigma. So how do we get this sigma? In the previous slide, we saw that the way we do that is basically we find the samples, individual samples of the discrete time signal by just finding the value of individual sample by just putting in n of t and is the which sample into the original signal here. So if we do the math, what we get is 2e alpha t instead of t, we are going to put n of t u and then we can rewrite this 2e negative alpha t times n and then to make our life a little simpler we will just say that a is equal to alpha t then we get 2 a to the power n u of n so this is the this is how we convert from the analog to digital. I'm sorry, this is how we convert from the analog continuous time to analog discrete time. And then if you want to find the individual samples, we really would only need to put the value of the sample like one first sample, second sample, and so on. Uh, and then uh, we have the time defined. And then we will use uh, that information to find the actual values. So that's uh, an example to do it by. Now, one other thing that was not covered in the previous video was that all we have discussed so far was the sampling in the time domain. But we can also sample in the frequency domain. So here, instead of sampling in the time domain, we sample the spectrum just like it's shown in the diagram here and then we have a dual of the time sampling theorem it's called spectrum spectral sampling sampling we'll not go into the details but i just wanted to uh, put this out there in case in case you come across it um, anytime so this is what it is with that we will finish the uh, sampling portion of it so what we have discussed in these two slides is that if we're given the analog continuous time signal, then we pass that through a sampler and with the sample time that we need to figure out, which really is that we should sample at a rate greater than the Nyquist rate. And then what we get is the analog discrete time signal. And then one other, another thing that we learned was that in practice, we have a filter called anti-aliasing filter that we um, pass our original signal through first before we start sampling. So that's it about sampling. In the next video, we're going to discuss the process of converting this analog discrete time signal to digital signal through a, through a process called A to D conversion. So if you're interested, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you. Bye.